glucose. The aerospace startups are playing a significant role in reshaping the landscape of the aerospace industry. These innovative companies are leveraging and advancements in technology, adopting novel business models and addressing emerging challenges to solve a new course in the aerospace sector. The key aspects of the session is, number one, the smaller and more agile operation. The aerospace startup often operate with the learner teams and streamlined processes, allowing for quicker decision making and adaptability. Agile operations enable these startups to prevent rapidly, experiment with the new technology, and respond more efficiently to customer needs. Innovation in design and technology is the second one, where the development of cutting edge technologies and materials for aircraft and spacecraft design. The emphasis on lightweight materials, advanced propulsion systems, and normal aerodynamics. New business models, some startups are introducing novel business models such as on-demand air mobility services, satellite constellations for global internet coverage, or space tourism ventures. Focus on sustainability, many aerospace startups prioritize sustainability aiming to reduce the environmental impact. Space exploration and uh, satellite technologies. Startups are actively participating in the new space race, developing technologies for satellite manufacturing, launch services, and exploration missions. Venture capital and uh, private investment. Aerospace startups are attracting significant investment from venture capital firms, angel investors, and private equity. Rapid prototyping and testing. Rapid prototyping techniques are used to leverage the startups. Then simulation tools to speed up the design and testing phase. Iterative testing allows for quick identification, identification and resolution of issues. Collaboration and ecosystem building. Collaborative efforts between startups, established aerospace companies, research institutions, and government agencies. Autonomous system and AI integration. Global market penetration. Addressing the market needs. In summary, aerospace startups are disrupting the traditional paradigms by forcing innovation, embracing agility, and addressing evolving market demand. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you, God, for giving me a is an aerospace engineer and a young scientist awardee with a big vision of revolutioning the space. He has profound knowledge in rocket science and astronomy. He has routed his big vision to connect the world through space tech by establishing Aeroid Space Tech Company. Aeroid Space Tech is a research startup that bridges the gap between academia and aerospace industry. He believes in hard work, self-confidence, honesty, and passion. He is passionate about space and science and dream of building a vast aerospace sector in India. He has research papers being published in various reputed national and international journals. He has four patents and he has authored a book. The time is closed. Thank you. So as of now, 
Uh, we have trained 5,500 students in past six months in offline, and we have trained the students who are working at ISRO and many space tech companies. And uh, so I have done seven patents and seven paper publications on my reputed fields, and also published a book. So this is like a kind of promotion. I could say that I published a book on steel revolution, understanding of stars life. So it's an available on Amazon. If you want, you can uh, download or you can buy the books. So today we will discuss about the reductions of the topic, innovations and the current challenges and startups. Because many of you people, what I can see is, maybe you are at chances of building our own startup in aerospace sectors and maybe in the future people are trying it. So let's see. And uh, everyone is facing private Some people might be know and some people don't know. So let me tell about our company, what we do. So we work in two sectors. One is primarily we working on SLLV concept rocket. So small lift launch vehicle. Rocket. So it is completely of building of within solid propulsion systems. So that R&D works are going on, and uh, you will get some of the updates in upcoming days and months. So until then, I can't disclose all this confidential projects. So apart from that, we will be like bridge between industry and an academia. So we will train the students and uh, those who are in aerospace engineers and aeronautical engineers. So we will train the students and to work in reputed companies of aerospace. So this is what we do. And uh, so basically, in coming to the topics of aerospace industry, first you need to understand what is aerospace industry. So some people think that only rockets is about aerospace industry. Some might think on drones, some might think of satellite, it is not. There's all things like in astrophysics which we are talking about this particular person we are discussing and what you saw from the morning of Amnitkal Cosmos rocket and satellite communication from the expert, this all the things we will be talking about. But in particularly aerospace industry, so we need to understand the concept how we have started initially based on Indian aerospace. So we know everyone and uh, like we took a rocket of nose cone to bicycle and to transport the same rocket with the mobility of the transportation. So see that how technology has been transmitted from the initial basis of Indian aerospace industry to the particular day. So this is how the technology we have been rising and we have so much of advanced technologies in terms of uh, Indian aerospace. So we could expert by end of 2030, our economy will go and uh, reach 70 billion USD dollar. So which was very huge market. So we were running towards the big advanced technology. So you could see within the past several years of five to ten years, system, the rapid developments in aerospace industries. In particular, we could say in Tamil Nadu also, in the Gujarat state and Maharashtra and UP and really all the states in the, uh, considering the borders in India. So all the aerospace industries are just started booming itself. And that's what aerospace, we talk about drone sectors, and we can talk about satellite communication, we can talk about the rocket science. So this all which will come under aerospace. But particularly in space tech, so launch service of satellites, or you could say uh, building of satellites like kind of a tube sets and sending it to the spaces. So this spe space economy, you could say we are just out of two uh, in the global market, we are just a two percentage. So which is of 7.7 billion. But in last year, within last year, we just rise it in one percentage high. Like you could say 8.3 billion USD dollar at a yeah. globally. So how the fastest growing Indian space tech is rising off? That we need to appreciate a little. But even though we have this much of by this mission and satellites, we could see all the terminus changes which happen in satellite communication. So that we could able to get space exploration. So he was talking about Aditya Alimov, which was uh, sent in the last year, August month. So by that, we could able to study completely on the sun. This is what about the space explorations that we are talking about and unmanned UAVs. So UAVs and drones is just like a vast field and we had n number of opportunities and n number of job creations has been done here and innovation technology. So you could see in the, few, in the past, if you talk about, we talk about only limited drone companies are there and the limited drone companies are there trying to solve the problems for the agricultural purposes and some companies are working and solving for some repeated tasks. But now you could find individually many companies, even personally they had things like many companies are working individually who could able to solve the problem particularly on the solution base. So we have that UAS also and public private partnerships. So after that Indian space policy comes into the market, like we could say the past five years we know that many space companies comes to the market. And this is all happened because of private and public contributions and the partnerships. So not only the India people talk about, but in also the future, like in the foreign countries and FDS hundred percent is being fulfilled. So we can take all the investments from the foreign countries and public and private how this all works and skill development and education out. And this is the most important thing which we want to talk about because even though we have this many of opportunities in India, but 
people and the student, those who are studying currently in Sayabad, Tamil Nadu or in India itself, they are could not able to get a job in particular companies. Why? There is no skills and proper knowledge about it. They just study only the books and presentations what the faculties are providing. It is not about the rocket science or aeronautics. You should come out of the things, you should think out of the box and have to do some of the research and products on it. So then if you have capital knowledge and capital skills, you could be able to work in reputed uh, companies or whatever you want to explore in the space and space, you could do it. And then global competitiveness. So according to the market, we have to compete with the global itself. Like if some countries are working on this, like it's considered supersonic flight, so which was uh, recently made by hypersonic, which was made by NASA and uh, Lockheed Martin. So we are trying to build some of the advanced which is that. So we have to comparatively talk about the particular technology to different countries. And then we have to raise up our skills and how we could be able to overcome in the situations and how we could be able to talk about the different technologies. And then economic growth. See if all this done and we could be able to do easily economic growth and obviously the economic will be uh, increased rapidly. And the current challenges in startup phases especially and dependence on imports. So let's consider a part of a drone or let's consider a part of satellite. So how to build an indigenous uh, drone or something? Um, of course you have to buy some of the parts from different countries or different states. So this is what import and export works and the delaying indigenous programs. So if this process of imports and exports works, obviously that will be delay in the process. So if there is a delay in the process, the customers when we could not able to transfer or we could not able to submit the uh, projects on time. This is what the usually startup is and budget consists. Even though if uh, these things all be done, the biggest thing is the investments and the funding. So they had an idea to build a startup and they are currently working on those project. But unfortunately, they have crossed the limits from the budget. So the main startup, what they have to do is they have to think of what's happening in the project and they need to understand the technological. We should not cross the limits. So they have to keep in their mind how this have to make it very cost effectively. So they could be able to reduce this budget constraints and infrastructure developments. So satellite, how many uh, in India we talk about space like companies recently only we could see uh, from Blue Space and uh, from Skyroof they have the max scale. So they have the infrastructure developments. But before that there is no privatizations and there is no space labs where could be able to test a product also. So we have to depend on some of the uh, institutions or we have to depend on some of the countries also. So this is the biggest problem for infrastructure development and skill workforce shortages. So recently, you know, just before I was talking with the uh, expert, so he's saying that in astrophysics also, where we are working on, we couldn't able to get an exact person who is very knowledgeable and skilled. Even though if he is very knowledgeable, he is going abroad. So that's what the uh, Indian startup mainly they are facing is about and public-private collaborations. So public and private agencies have to have come from the security global company previously, we have to complicate with the global markets and what's happening in other countries or what's happening in a different co uh, co companies you can say and the you can start but you cannot ever take up but you can do it in a green zone so these are all secondary concerns you should keep into your mind and you need to follow the DTC guide it's called in the drones but the same kind of the drones if we are talking about the satellite it exists you can't launch your rocket or you can't test your rocket at any place of your uh, country itself because uh, one incident which was happened a year back, we were in the Uttaragan and uh, we want to about test 10 km of rocket which is probably a solid company. But unfortunately, we were not able to test it and we were not able to launch it because it's in Uttaragan where it's very near of Rishikesh and it's completely up, comes under a uh, yellow zone. So we were not able to launch the rocket. So where we have to go? Only we have to go for sea science. But unfortunately, we were not able to do it. But uh, still under the progress, we will to export these launches within a couple of months also. And the market demand. So many startups, what they are doing is, they are ending the problem statement existing happening in the market first. And accordingly, they are working to solve the problem. This is what the market demand and the emerging technologies. So if you talk about emerging technologies, in terms of rocket, we have advanced technology. In terms of drone also we have, in satellite, many satellite companies like Vigantra, Google Space and a Pixel. So these all the companies, what they are trying to build is, they are building a tube satellites. Why they are building a tube satellites? Because we could able to reduce the space debris cost effectively, easy to manufacture, easy to carry, and everything we could do it in period of time itself. This is how this technology works, and that's what I told you before itself. But if you are comparing, comparatively talking about from past to now, we have terminology and rapid changes, very rapid changes in the technological wise. And uh, especially in rocket science or the tube satellites, we are talking about satellite technology or roads and UAVs, 
these three are very fundamental. So additive manufacturing, we are we know completely about additive manufacturing. Once upon the cube sets, we are now nowadays we are able to make cube sets with 3D printing itself. And what happening will they have made? 60% of the raw fit was 3D printed. This is what a technological advancement is there. And now we are using AI. So if you given some of the tasks and works, obviously we are going for charging to be. We have any number of AI softwares. So it makes work easy. But what we want to try to understand here is simple things. Just uh, humans have created AI. Okay, humans have created AI, but AI is dominating humans and making workplace for the humans. These things are done by humans only. But what happening here? It's completely changed. So if AI is completely developing, right, the workforce of uh, man should be reduced. Like yesterday I was talking about uh, my co-pilot, like it means my friend who is, uh, is working as a pilot. And he said in the future, when we have classes in the future, might be, there will be only one pilot in the flight. There will be no co-pilot at all. Because AI comes into the market and AI, AI will replace their job also. So for a pilot, they will pay you 4 lakhs or 3 lakhs per month. So that work efficiency will be reduced here. This is what AI is replacing it, but we have to use the technological. But how we are using the technology is very important. So that we need to understand. And machine learning. So we are using machine learning technologies and artificial technology and especially security manufacturing. Because once we are going for identity manufacturing, we could uh, make the process very easy. At the same time, we can make the process at the cost effective also. So these three uh, manufacturing or these three technologies, we could talk about very easily that we are doing in company in India. And the opportunity for growth. So we have any number of opportunities in startups. So compared to one ninety startups I was talking about in India. So there were four uh, urban mobility is there and space technology for science and payloads for satellites are there, for launch vehicles and new and drones for space tourism also. Like India is currently working for space tourism. So we are seeing some reusable rockets and in the future we are trying to build some space tourism. And the cost for per person there they are charging around six crore to eight crore in the market in the future. So we could see the market of uh, foreign countries and Blue Origin is there and Virgin Galactic. So they are the companies that they are bringing completely the passenger to the space to experience the zero gravity and also to experience how the outer space works. So this is like a space tourism. So these are all the technologies that the startups are finding the problem. But initially, if you talk about 1990s or 90, in 2000s, we have only ISRO and still we have an ISRO. But in addition to this, we have any number of startups who could be able to resolve all the problems. So we could say that uh, in Chandrayaan 3, so we are very happy for Chandrayaan 3, right? So when Chandrayaan 3 was had a soft landing on the moon surface, complete Indians was very proud. And everyone chanting that yes, we are a proud Indian and we were done sad as everything. But what happened is we did this mission successfully in 2023. That's of course that's very fine. But NASA and some other countries they had a big potential and which they did very early itself. They have the big investments and they have the big things. But now, like the country of India, like we are the nations, and we are working closely to this project only this markets. So we need to understand how the technology we are very bad. But now we are pushing up. Like we will come forward by end of 2030, but we are running very fast. So by end of 2030 or end of 2047, we could as, uh, sustain or we could attain the position where we are. This is what about and uh, yeah, this is all the Indian space things. So if we talk about an observatory, uh, there, uh, there is a company like Pixel, Blue Sky and Sky Sir. And for launch vehicle, we have Sky Road, Space Fields. And recently Space Fields, like uh, two days back, they got an investment. So these are the companies and Intralex, they got one week before investments. And the full stack satellites, they have Blue Space, Galaxy and Pixel. So these are all the startups. And even in the future, maybe even our company also, we are working right for it. So we are about to release all the things in social media, if you are following our social media. Just uh, let you know that and within a couple of months we will give an update what we are doing currently but because you could see what a company doing is focused on Edutech but that's not. Apart from the Edutech, we are also working on a project which we could not able to disclose all the things. So now we are into the market and we will release one by one what's happening on. And uh, Indian Space Tech. So these are the main three highlights which I want to talk about because Indian Space Policy is there. So after the Indian Space Policy, Many space tech companies into the market, and there was one survey also. Every five minutes in India, students or the people are talking about to build a startup. So this is what the interesting fact we want to know it. And after Indian space policy, we know that many space tech companies are coming. Wherever I go to LinkedIn, I could see uh, some uh, name and private limited company, NLP limited company. So these are the startups they were trying to solve the problems. But how many people could able to sustain? That's a question mark. How many people could go for a long time? That's a question mark. 
So you want to do a startup, you need three things: patience, hard work, and the consistency. So hard work obviously you want to put in a company, but apart from that, the consistency is matter. Even though it is a fail or even though it is a success, you have to sustain for a long time, and you want to do all the process consistently. So if everything you do at a time, then you have a potential in the startup. But more about the building of startup, we need to understand. And moreover, what the problem you are going to identify and how you are going to give the solution for it. If some, uh, for example, if some companies are already working on it and you are giving the same solution, that's nothing. But you want to give something different out of those one and with some advanced technological and some some uh, different uh, manufacturing units or the cost effectively. So how you are building your product is very important and how you are giving the solutions to the customers or solutions to the market is very important. And then FP hundred percent. So a week back, we could see that a uh, like foreign direct investment is completely full for hundred percent in space. Then. And there is no GST exemptions for uh, sending a satellite to the space. So this all the things has been happening in our country. And by those things, like not only the private Excuse companies. Your time is up. Please sign it. Yes, that's the last thing. Ah, yeah, thank you. So this is what is about. And uh, by this all the things, we could able to create a job opportunities completely. And uh, from private or public or these things. And uh, this is the two minutes starts about yeah. talk about your people. So what I understand, like I went in, I've been in for around 12 colleges in the past one year. When I'm interacting with the students, what I yeah. understand is they are pursuing their B tech or M tech in aerospace. I suppose it's considered a B tech student. So a B student, he is doing B tech or B in aerospace or aeronautical. Then in the masters, he's doing MBA, and in the job, he is going working for some sales and executives. Or if he is doing B tech in aerospace, he's actually going for some marketing company. Why? We have n number of opportunities in India, in Tamil Nadu or any other states in consider. We have n number of opportunities where space tech startups also provide you. You want to get the jobs. If you want to get into the job, the first thing is you need to fulfill your skills and knowledge in that. So how you will fulfill your skills and knowledge means you want to work apart from your courses. So reading only books and presentations doesn't will help you out in aerospace career. If you have a passion on that, you want to work completely for it. And if you are working completely, then you have a better future for your face. So we have n number of opportunities which we want to tell you people. So you can check in the issue itself or you can check in the private companies that could be able to get these things. And that's what I want to tell you people. So the simple and conclusion is, if you want to work on aerospace field, first you want to decide where you want to be in after 10 years or after 5 years. Then later, you want to make a proper pathway for it. So after making a proper pathway, you have to just put your schedules on that. You have to travel one by one, one by one. So if every process goes alignedly, definitely you have a better future and you could be able to work in some private companies or government institutions and uh, if you want to work on the space sciences. So you could build your own startups or you could build your own companies or you could work in some repeated companies of aerospace. So this is what and uh, thank you. Thanks for us. Thank you so much. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. It's time to felicitate our speaker. Devices and sensors in the manufacturing process, 
to create smart factories, artificial intelligence and machine learning, robotics and automation, usually collaborative robots, the collaborative robots working alongside with the human workers is increasing, enhancing the efficiency and flexibility in man. <laughs> Autonomous mobile robots, then advanced materials and nanotechnology, advanced composites, nanomaterials, uh, other areas, augmented reality AR and virtual reality VR. So we have to train and maintain them, maintain them. And uh, augmented uh, AR and VR are utilized for training the operators and the maintenance personnel, pro pro providing immersive experience for learning complex tasks and troubleshootings. Then supply chain digitalization using blockchain technology and digital platforms, sustainable manufacturing, circular economic practices and energy efficient processes, edge computing and human centric design. Biomanufacturing, it is always known as biofabrication, the use of biomanufacturing techniques for creating tissues, organs, and other biological materials with the application of medical and pharmaceutical industries. So, manufacturers that embrace these emerging trends can gain a competitive edge by improving efficiency, reducing costs, and staying at the forefront of the technological innovations. Thank you. It is a blessing of Almighty. Now I am going to introduce the great personality, Dr. Hens Subramaniam. He is a former senior scientist and chief general manager of ISRO. He obtained his bachelor degree in mechanical engineering from Madurai Kamaraja University and MBA in financial management service from Indira Gandhi Open University. He obtained his doctorate from Bharatidas University. Dr. Hens Subramaniam has never been in space, but his photograph has Science was always my first and only choice, declared the veteran SRO scientist. He went to school and learned about science just like everyone else, but there was a difference. He had an instinct of curiosity and led him to learn much more. It was his self-driven motivation to be head of his contemporaries that resulted in his photograph being abroad in space, abroad NASA space, surplus discovery. In the world, yeah, Atlantis, which orbited the Earth this year. He has a detailed focus engine, high precision engineering, manufacturing, project management, and material research for the state as well. Thank you, sir. Students, students, sit direct. Sit direct. Clap your hands.
then uh, they are going for space 3, then it's a privatization and uh, use of okay, the space service like colonization of Mars or Luna, that's it. Similarly for the NASA also is going for the space 4. Ultimately, if you see, space 4 is the place wherein how best you can apply the space of research to the common man and how, how best the common man is getting benefited. And similar to that, manufacturing also has advanced manufacturing zero. Phase manufacturing one, using machinery, manufacturing two, making automation, making manufacturing three, using computer aided integration, integrated manufacturing, and the integrated solution for the um, design by manufacturing method. That is the manufacturing 4.0, I will just touch upon. And most of the things which I wanted to speak already, the previous speaker has uh, covered. So, with which I will uh, start. Uh, <coughs> the, by definition, and that's true, advanced manufacturing, why I am talking advanced manufacturing is, in ISO, the first time precision machineries have been bought by me, approved by from my house and stuff. First time in India, Shaolin Lake was purchased by me, and the scooter grinder was purchased by me in 1969, for which Vikram uh, Sarabhai signed and approved. That was the period uh, when manufacturing, precision manufacturing started. From that, advanced manufacturing, how it goes. If you see, it is the creation of integrated solution that require the production of physical artifacts coupled with the value-added services. Value-added services is a thing which I wanted to dwell and people should know. And the software will exploit the custom design and the recycled material and the using uh, ultra efficient process. As already uh, defined, manufacturing includes the existing or creates entirely new materials. I am designing a material for aerospace, which nobody can understand. I am designing aluminum alloy AA7075, which is a special material with a specific material composition content and a specific quality content. Hydrogen content should be this much, the, uh, the pores should be this much, cracks, permeable should be this much. This I am designing. Material specification I am designing so that it meets uh, my aerospace. Otherwise, GSL Mark II or Mark III tank will crack or engine will burst. So I need to have a strength to withstanding the temperature and the long duration. And that. That's why I use the uh, science and engineering and information technologies, high precision tools, high performance workforce, and innovative business and organizational models with the flexibility of custom manufacturing to respond rapidly to customer demand desired quality. Why I am really curious, aerospace is the market in which they will tell you today, tomorrow I want to put a satellite. I cannot take a long time, six months. I cannot, my design or my fabrication or my testing or my reliability method should suit Suddenly, that one Indonesia will come and ask, why is that right? need to be this much uh, compatibility, interfaceability? My design has to take care of which angle it has to go, which uh, velocity I should project. So my design should take care of the flexibility. So flexibility and the quick to adapt to the design is one of the criteria. For which uh, smart manufacturing, advanced manufacturing sells from substantive advancement, which are often referred to as Intelligent and smart manufacturing system, integrated computational predictability and operation emissions. Advanced manufacturing produces goods that minimize use of resources with the low cost, with the best efficiency, zero defect. Somebody told earlier, one of the speakers said, I can allow some defect. No, aerospace, we don't want to have a defect. We want zero defect. Otherwise, man will not go to Moon, he will go to somewhere else. So, 
If you see the advancement of emerging technology, manufacturing technology, aeronautical and uh, aeronautical and uh, astronautics play 8.5 percent of the overall manufacturing activities globally. If you see the distribution of manufacturing in the entire globally, this plays this much 8.5 percent. In which the technologies which are future for manufacturing, advanced sensor, sensor play a major role, which I used to answer. One first side is advanced material, sustainable manufacturing, nano manufacturing, flexible electronics, bio manufacturing, additive manufacturing, advanced manufacturing, industrial robots, advanced farming. In which I want to tell the audience why I am telling about sensor is. Our Chandrayaan 3 had five sensors laser double emitter, laser camera, inertial double system, and so many other sensors. With the five sensors, we were able to land within a span of two kilometers by two kilometers. Whereas, Japanese SLIM, SLIM spacecraft, they also landed in Moon, but they, they didn't land in the southern part. They, they landed in some like equatorial plane. They landed with the three sensors. They also used laser double emitter. They also used the laser gyroscope. They also used the touch sensor. But they were able to land within 30 meter, within 30 meter square. They are better than our accuracy. The precision accuracy is better than our landing capacity. The result is, why I am telling is, sensors, accuracy of the sensors, and the fusing of the sensors data. If you put five sensors and your algorithm, you fuse the data, then data, how it going to help? That's the criteria. But Japanese used a very accurate sensor, but they, they landed, but unfortunately, they nose died. They nose died, because they landed in a different way. Whereas Odyssey, last week, China landed with the six leg. We had four leg. Or Chandrayaan had four leg. And uh, Apollo had three legs. And uh, Slim also had four legs. Whereas Odyssey had six legs. One leg broken. One leg broken. Why it is broken? They are clear and they have told. The material used in the leg is not the quality standard. It does not meet the quality standard. So in landing, it landed on a crater. So in that also died. Fortunately, their sensors and their payload work. So the important here is sensor is going to the future trend. So the sensor, either laser sensor or Doppler sensor or uh, ultrasonic sensors or vibratory sensors. You should uh, go for the future technology. Industrial robotics and advanced farming are the three. I summarize these things under three categories nano engineering and the material surface. That is, for the required for the electronics fabrication. Nano engineering. You want to give a coating and you go to the surface as to be accurate to the level of sub micron level. That is lambda by 16. That is, if I have a mirror which is laying a satellite which has to scan the earth, there is a scanner that gives the cloud mapping that has to be working means that the mirror has to be a year reflectivity within a surface accuracy of lambda by 20, which is being achieved by either manual polishing or chemical polishing or chemical etching by this technique it has been achieved. So that is the only thing. The second thing is additive precision manufacturing. Already our previous speaker has covered robotics and automation. Next generation of electronics. Next generation of electronics in which I want to dwell upon is uh, India is going for a semiconductor policy, manufacturing policy. So far, we don't have the fabrication in India. Only we have woken up now. Whereas, 
Yes, in Hong Kong, Taiwan, China, Japan, America, they have gone to the fabrication facility to manufacture semiconductor with an accuracy of 4 nanometer. Between two layers, 4 nanometer accuracy they have gone. Whereas our policy now with the Tata or Lens, they are going for the manufacturing accuracy of 12 nanometer. Still, we are lagging in it, which requires uh, more than 16,000 crore investment with the thousand uh, engineering brain to work for it. So, this is the next generation of electronics. Engineers, can you think of all trying to the silica? Do you have any other material? Yeah, do you have any synthetic material? Or do you have some other carbon based material in future? So, that this whole nanometer of fabrication can be further enhanced. So this is the area to be talked about. Biomanufacturing, distributor supply chain, and the green sustainable manufacturing are the new areas. As a natural life, I just trying to club it. Manufacturing process innovation, which he has already mentioned, which go for a rapid prototyping, not only 3D printing, go for a 4D printing. 4D printing is both the axis you make it with the different materials so that you can make like a chair, chair like a collar, and the collar where the material is printed. Three other more alloy, whatever 3D printing is printed, and the fourth leg you can make a, some heater or something so that it burns. So there is a technique which is being followed in 4D printing, special coating, continuous process control, special coating why I am doing is. The solar panel, solar policy, solar policy, the solar cell is going to be in the dust. How do you clear the dust? Well, the wiper is changed here. Car like the wiper, where you cannot clean the, the solar thing. Either you go for a coating or go for a special cleaning technique, which is to be addressed. So, this is the thing, which, uh, thing and the manufacturing of biofuel, or medical and medical thing. Optoelectronics and photonics. This is one area, there's a separate field, a domain, which you need to be concentrated. Automation and precision manufacturing, precision manufacturing and new material, like material genomics, composite material, lightweight materials, meta materials. Meta materials already has come into uh, field and uh, I don't know, engineering subject, materials uh, subject is covered. But it is it needs to be addressed. Sustainability in manufacturing, like how best you can recycle the material, energy emission material, measurement and testing of advanced sensing, advanced methodology. If you see this uh, interface, innovation, production, and the government regulation, put to the economy and the growth, all are interlinked. And for advanced manufacturing, you need to have economy has a say on innovation. Innovation gives the skill and the labor that you go for the manufacturing related services. MIT, MIT US, that the Manufacturing Innovation Institute also has identified the same thing. They say universities and the national laboratories have the technology and they give to the manufacturing and the colleges, community colleges and manufacturing, university and research program as already previously told IR. So that has to be linked and the national network, high tech startup companies, large manufacturing companies, multiple manufacturing support centers. These are the matrix MT MAT has worked out how best innovation in advanced manufacturing can proceed. As I said, the changeover, reconfigurability, flexibility, transformability, agility. Agility in sense. Lunar orbit of Hoi Trini, Hoi Sadana, Yarangano, speed of Oregano, speed of Oregano, Samilo, and Thrustor, and Kokpanano, and the Thrustor, Chuda, and Kuda, suddenly, our master will change the Thrustor, our master will start to know the liquidity of Kuduma. Output transcript Out of the Kundana, 
என்ன செய்யணும் அதை வார்ம் அப் பண்ணணும் அந்த வார்ம் அப் பண்ணி அப்ப அந்த திரஸ்டை கொடுத்தோம்னா அந்த திரஸ்டர் எனக்கு ஆயிரம் நியூட்டன் திரஸ்ட் கொடுக்கணுமா நைன் ஹண்ட்ரட் நியூட்டன் திரஸ்ட் கொடுக்கணுமாங்கிற டிசைட் அந்த எஜிலிட்டி குயிக் டு டிசைட் இன் யுவர் பெர்ஃபார்மன்ஸ் தட் இஸ் அ திங் அண்ட் ஃப்ளெக்சிபிலிட்டி நாங்கள் கூட இல்லையா சாட்டலைட் நாங்கள் பண்ணிட்டு இருக்கோம் ஐசாக்ல பண்ணிட்டு இருக்காங்க பண்ணிட்டு இருக்காங்க சாட்டல திடீர்னு ப்ராண்டர் வந்து ஒரு லான்ச் வெஹிக்கிள் கேனாட் ஹேவ் திஸ் மச் கெப்பாசிட்டி யூ சேஞ்ச் யுவர் அசிவத் ஆங்கிள் அப்படின்னு ஒரு input on so you should be able to accept the design say and in a short time illa ni aar maasam kalichu varum solla mudiyadhu yelu yelu pere naanga apdi irundhom psl integrated bus like that there is a wind chain a vehicle when it blows wind direction kelta padi you have to design with the wind after two weeks the wind is going to be severe it is going to have a tilt so அந்த ரெண்டு வாரத்துக்காக நாங்கள் வி கேனாட் ஹோல்ட் அவர் டிசைன் நவ் வேரஸ் வி ஹவ் டிசைன் மெத்தட் பை விச் விண்ட் பயசிங் ஆன் தி டே ஆஃப் லான்ச் என்னைக்கு லான்ச் பண்ணுறோமோ அன்னைக்கு அப்பர் அட்மாஸ்பியரில் இருக்க விண்டு டைரக்ஷன் எடுத்து வி கல்குலேட் அண்ட் அக்கார்டிங்லி வி ஃபில் டு தி ராக்கெட் அண்ட் சென்டி தட் இஸ் தி அடாப்டபிலிட்டி ஸோ தி சேம் திங் விச் ஐ சென்ட் advanced product and advanced process lead to the smart manufacturing which is converges based on the government input in the ip region cultural factor and the stem education and immigration policies this lead to the advances in uh, manufacturing technology you know interesting thing if you see if you the global space manufacturing attractive index of pathina India ranks 106. Our rank is 113 in industry ranks. Infrastructure, we have no infrastructure. We have DHL, we have HIL, we have I, uh, in a data cell, everything. But our rank is 139. There is no killer in Guinea. One party to Achebo, USA, Singapore, and other things. This is one of the master this of the presentation ella global space economy 366 billion dollar varu sonanga na ella per group the entire audience i can say entire audience i can say consider and rocket and satellite rocket and satellite gives only 12.5 billion and 4.9 billion it gives only this much segment whereas you have a large potential and the ground application application like a network gateway and uh, satellite gathering equipment tv connection yes site agriculture resource inge ninga or satellite uttu chennai la irukka madurai la irukka building ude plan accurate map panni you can sell it you can sell it so satellite has so much potential in business whereas launch vehicle or rocket only in this much adula poi ella peru concentrate pannidukanga they are concentrating on that segment which is having only 8 to 10% whereas you have large potential in ground segment concentrate on that this is the piece which is given by us global industry space association how about the information so conventional manufacturing calls for first phase manufacturing zero like material development innovation maturity manufacturing 1.0 undi conventional technology raw material kondu porathu workshop la kodukkuradhu manufacturing pannadhu assemble pannadhu poyum adu work pannala work pannala theriyad this is what we face psl sl3 ki we made a valve for so manufacture given the sl3 assembled assembled mana pathana and red viewing as in the middle of it chavu ko poi pathana and the valve la or leak and the leak was due to the cleanliness cleanliness illa or bulb poi adichittadnala adha achi so idu vandu face of the manufacturing one of the two ko porappa we 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 put an integrated integrate 
solution and the recovery and the recycling of the hardware. And same thing happened. Same thing happened for our for students uh, information. We made GSLV. GSL because engine. Because engine or gas generator. Hello, red to hole or red to hole here. The fuel is pumping. And the job is manufactured at the in Toronto, one leading manufacturer. The fellow was Allah to drill on board. CNC broker under Miss Panita, which was a misleading inspection also. Finally, when we tested, we find insufficient fuel flow to the engine. Energy trust is safe for Allah. Trust is safe for Allah. Trust or not, in plenty of people, they have gone So, manufacturing plays a major role in which it is a continuous monitoring and assembly and the integrated solution is the solution which we look for manufacturing 2.0. <laughs> manufacturing 3.0 is advanced electronics, automation, uh, nano material, green manufacturing, yalla interlinked. Everything is subkochi interlinked. Everything is interlinked. So then only you may proceed in uh, manufacturing uh, manufacturing 4.0. So you may think friends, I summarize some two things. One is semiconductors and another one is biomaterials, advanced materials. These are the material advanced manufacturing layer of the new process with the flexibility. It's still I emphasize but flexibility is important, which is the biologically inspired nano scale fabrication process. Over the next 20 years, manufacturer will also increasingly use advanced and custom design material. Custom design material. Specifically, I am doing custom design. I am not able to material to buy the actual material. Material which you buy needs to be designed, tested, and used. That is the message which I am telling. In 20 years, synthetic biology could change the manufacturing of biological products coupled with advances in genomics, system, biology, and genetic engineering, tissue culture, tissue engineering. Biological engineering, which is that morning somebody was addressing. These are the area. So factories for the future is going to be a smart factory or virtual factory. Yellama you can imagine. If we make a product like this in the CNC machine, what will be the product output? And the third one is a digital factory. So virtually the product before it is realized, you can visualize in this factory, the factory which I have such and such machinery. What I will get at the end, that I will see. So, factories for the future, exploit in a new material and a high performance manufacturing, flexible, adaptive production plants for rapid and optimal energy use. This is the Taraka Mandira. You know, that advanced we should think of. And high precision micro manufacturing, zero defect. I repeat literally, aerospace cannot accept even a single defect. Six Sigma Kadayade. It is beyond 13 sigma, beyond it. it uh, I, I cannot allow even a zero thing. Near mid shape manufacturing, new material manufacturing to functionalities, manufacturing strategies for repair and reuse, product design using a sustainable material processing technology. Repair and reuse for the technology, China own is for the Russia own is for the They make the market. 10 semi-gram engine, render the old for now, and enter in there. They don't go for the repair and everything. Whereas we, Indian, cannot afford to have such a reaction. The cost is important. So recycle. We recycle it and we do the repair and we do it. The next coming is the cloud manufacturing, which is the coming years, which is a, what is a cloud manufacturing? It's a new network the intelligent manufacturing model that is service oriented, knowledge based, high performance and energy efficient. In this model, state of the art technologies such as informatized manufacturing, cloud computing. In the computer store on the internet, data way, suppose you want to manually find any project where manufacturing is there. Manufacturing sector or in cloud. Stores go or cloud, purchase go or cloud, you can separate out and do it. 
that will be easy and it will be low price and the, the whole manufacturing line cycle will be better. This is the final product of Technology transfer of the and the startup, what the problem they face in India, we have faced. We have faced it. We have made the confidence. We have developed the confidence. Gave to the industry. And the industry is not a problem faced to produce. I mean, then now now is right for you. I got an amuchira. Technology imports. Small number of developed countries provide most of the technological innovation. Most of the developing countries are neither innovating or adapting. Are the developing countries will no. <coughs> developing countries will no. They are not innovating or adapting. Lack of capability to create globally competitive technologies. For technology developer, and the technology, yet they are modeling something. Space technology, Udana, information is very much useful for the advanced, advanced sustainable life. And the other country, Kotura Made, Navy Way for Kaiji, Silver Kotura, the drama of the Udina, Snabu is a regular. I want that the use for the full use for the good year, utility is less. So the technology should go to the lower level. So isolation of universities and RD from industry. Yes. This is a problem which we face, which India has also addressed, we should integrate. Technology and prime factor, infrastructure, R&D institute and testing facilities in developing countries, all sort of quality when compared with industrialized countries. I want to specifically tell this point. Quality of your space, zero defect. And the standard is different from automobile standard, textile standard, Pharmaceutical standard. Pharmaceutical manufacturing standard can be different. That is aerospace standard to the highest class. We face a problem. We made one number and we gave it to Boeing USA. They told us didn't accept. They said it doesn't meet the US specification. What it is not. And that we understood later. And ISO adopted the US culture. Like that, aerospace culture should be disseminated to the industry. After that, not over manufacturing, everything will go. Lack of collaborative research, isolation of universities and R&D from industry. This is the what main point in the discussion. You are going for a production of a rocket, the semiconductor engine. It uses the liquid oxygen and hydrogen, kerosene. Kerosene and liquid. This is the same thing. The same thing 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 is the same thing. The Based on technological change, SMEs lack capability to possibly upgrade the technologies, changing technologies in developing countries, easy in process industries. Technology acquisition, updating uh, capability to update or industry in the in order to aerospace technology in Sonana, they should be able to absorb. And absorbing capability is not the quality of the quality of the Lack of ready access to capital and high interaction. Unique level technology absorption is low. Smaller firms, they find difficult to finance. That's why I'm not getting something. Smaller firms, yet in the smaller firms, I have given 25 firms, Ramachan and SEC, and those so many industries I have given Fabrication contract during the 90s and the 80s, 85 to 95. So many industries. Small industries, they are finding very difficult to finance in general. Yena, I demand a quality which requires so much hours of manufacturing and they spend so much amount of manufacturing hours return to the problem. 
figure as the aerospace products are low volume, high quality. Low volume, high quality. That's another return number for air. That's another small industries are tiny individual, low participation in the management of decision. And the major problem is skilled demand for availability, lack of continuous knowledge update for the new technologies are very difficult. So, at the end, manufacturing engineers, we, I will say, go for lighter, faster, better, and cheaper material. This is the Andhra and uh, our Guru, Guru Dilla, manufacturing Dilla. Again, our Guru Dilla, it's not open again. It's only the hardware, sir. Both for the center, for the motor case, to the instruments, we have supplied it. Aerospace manufacturing technologies are continuously upgraded. Many innovative manufacturing methods are being developed and adapted to meet the challenging stringent quality requirements. While well, innovation is something new, reality, it is the culmination of imagination, determination, knowledge, understanding, enthusiasm, and the discipline to put all these things together. The understanding and the determination in it, that is the main thing. படிக்கிறேன் so, which are you as not? You are as meaningless. Although we can say that we are not as meaningless. I saw the same time, we put the job at dedication, Atmartama, full time concentration order, in and out, A to B. Chandrayaan landing of the Yilla technology of Puning, A to B, he has understood and he has achieved. So, a remarkable milestone by ISRO of Chandrayaan 3, which is well appreciated by India. Energy, Father Mudla, Nirmala Sindram, Harigan, Pono, Chandrayaan 3, Lander, Chandrayaan 3, India, Nala, the Nada, here. Established first country to land in cold zero South Pole. After it's on up, the entire parliament decided standing ovation for the entire parliament 540 MPs. Kaida Kibe, Appa was on the Nasadana, the Telaki Purimana, Tarna, and the Pun Vira Mutuil, and the gallery of Bakaka Barga, our own Appa. So our culture, pride, our culture, that our desire, our manager, all the way, achieve one, achieve more. So one should be satisfied with the achievement of the end goal, where you are planning and where you are achieving. Are they even the first? Now, when I hear those people, I hear those ladies, these are the boys, they are all so rich, na? They are not doing. They are all putting their salary on it, but the thing is, the thing is. The end use is to be achieved. So that is the determination, enthusiasm. So to sum up, to sum up, sum up, sorry, then I sum up. I am saying, advanced manufacturing, material processing technique plays a vital role in aerospace hardware. We so is marching towards achieving self-reliance with the self-support from many industries. Many new innovative manufacturing technology shall lead to successful. Accomplishment of program by means of India's making India action. With this, I conclude. These are my reference. Now, what can I do now? Tap on on the other part. Now, these are the reference. And we can take reference of this. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, sir.
would like to appreciate the chair and co-chair of the session. Students, dear participants, uh, before going to the section on small announcement, you can hear a lot of uh, speech from your side. So you can understand we are uh, kind enough to come and speak to the stage also. So during the section, uh, you are uh, after the section, you are uh, advised to any your clarification, any of the doubt we can interact. Suppose any of the speech are my side, suppose some of the staff members they identify now, you have to come and Two minutes you have to come and talk to the regarding the same topic you have to talk. Okay? It's clear now. I request Kavita Madam and uh, some of the volunteers, please identify who is the uh, one people to open in the mouth. You can please call them. Who is taking Kavita Madam? And then some more staff members. Please take care. Madam Kavita Madam, please go on. Some of the front volunteers also, please. And to Shabar, give the mic to the one of the volunteers. Good afternoon, everyone. Now, the next speaker is Mr. Nassim Rao. Uh, his topic is uh, Drone Data Capturing. Drone Data Capturing. So, another name for the Drone Data Capturing is uh, UAV. It's an unmanned uh, aerial vehicle. Unmanned aerial vehicle. So, using this, uh, this became the valuable tool for uh, various Indian industries as well as the security process of the various our government and non-government organizations, as well as capturing the not only data, as well as video for the mapping and surveying of uh, various inspection purpose. To complete this uh, drone data capturing, there are the following uh, few steps need to be followed. Like uh, steps like uh, 
let me tell about only the key points what he is going to discuss. Like a title, like a mission planning, equipment sensor setups, and firefighting check, and flight extension, as well as the data capture, and as well as the data processing, data analysis and interruption, and reporting and decision making, data storage and achieving, regulatory computation, and security and data productions, as well as the maintenance and quality assurance. So the above the few of the uh, almost close to 12 key points he is going to discuss. He may be, you, can, you can say also this is a step-by-step -step process to capture the drone data capturing. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed faculty members and honored guests, it's my distinct privilege and pleasure to introduce our esteemed guest speaker for today's event, Engineer D. Narsingh Rao, with a wealth of expertise and a remarkable portfolio of achievements in the field of surveying engineering, Mr. Rao embodies the spirit of innovation, dedication, and excellence. Mr. Narsingh Rao's journey in the realm of surveying engineering is characterized by a relentless pursuit of knowledge and mastery of cutting-edge technologies. His expertise spans a wide array of surveying methodologies including GPS, high precision leveling, total station, and UAV surveying, reflecting his profound understanding of the particulars of modern surveying practices. Throughout his illustrious career, Mr. Rao has undertaken several projects of national importance, demonstrating his unwavering commitment to serving the greater good. From redefining the vertical datum of India post-tsunami to contributing to the Indian Coast Zone Mapping Project, his work has left an indelible mark on the landscape of surveying engineering in our country. Notably, Mr. Rao's exceptional contributions have garnered recognition from esteemed institutions and authorities, including the Extraordinary Work Award bestowed upon him by Major General Nagarajan, Director GNRB Survey of India, for his outstanding achievements using digital level. Mr. Rao spearheaded the establishment of ground control points for the United Andhra Pradesh, demonstrating remarkable precision and dedication with each 72 hours GPS observation. Additionally, he has extended his expertise to the National Urban Information Systems Project, meticulously establishing ground control points across six towns in Telangana, Rayalaseema, and coastal Andhra regions. Furthermore, he has been instrumental in various large-scale initiatives, such as the Indian Coast Zone Mapping Project, where he meticulously planned and executed mapping activities along the 1,032 linear kilometer stretch, leaving no stone unturned in ensuring accurate and thoroughness. Uh, please join me in extending a warm welcome to Mr. Rao. Thank you, sir. Every war advances the cause of science. Now, what is the war going on? <coughs> Ukraine and so what are the what is the technology used there? Drones. drones. So drones appear which was which it started as a recreational activity for photography and videography. Now it has taken the form of war. Okay, now uh, drone technology we have been using for surveying and mapping in Survey of India as well as in other departments. Drones are also known as unmanned aerial vehicles, remote departed vehicles, aerial robots and as the environment terms as drones. Drones are of fixed wing and rotor type. Fixed wings, you need uh, place to take off as well as land, which in turn requires uh, space. But whereas in uh, drone uh, quad rotors, sorry, Rotor traps, you don't need any space, it is just vertical takeoff and landing. This is a typical DJI drone, uh, which is a VTOL. Now, categories of drones 
या नैनो मिनी स्मॉल मीडियम एंड हेवी जनरली फॉर सर्वेइंग एंड मैपिंग फ्यूज मिनी एज वेल एज स्मॉल सो दिस इज अ पार्ट्स ऑफ अ ड्रोन व्हाई यू वांट टू लेबल पार्ट्स ऑफ अ ड्रोन लाइक फॉर एनी एनिमल बगल और एनीथिंग यू tie it loose rope so as to give it a direction you cannot pull the uh, uh, cow from behind no so similar way you label this drone so when once you know the nose point then you will be able to control it manually when it is not in auto mode so this is quad rotor A quad rotor here, M1, M2, and M4. These rotors they rotate in clockwise direction. M1 and M3 in anti-clockwise, uh, anti-clockwise direction. A basic principle of drone is the vertical lift force is generated by the propellers rotating in clockwise and anti-clockwise direction. If they rotate in one direction, they will be just going on spinning, but they will not, they will not be able to take off. Thrust will not be generated. Drones used for the uh, following activity: aerial photography, videography, survey mapping, inspection of power lines, windmill, solar panels, architectural sites. So, just to fly a drone in auto mode, this uh, these following steps are required. How to make a KML? What is KML? <coughs> the whole matter of language. Here, these are uh, few steps are written for you to have an idea how to from Google Earth how to make a KML. See, so this is your uh, VR cameras. Open Google, uh, make a polygon, give it a name, select the other uh, param parameters like width, color. Opacity and save it uh, in this format. Now, uh, now you have made a KML. Now you have to fly the drone. To fly the drone, you need a mission planning. Mission planning is you need to have. Certain parameters like at what altitude you need to fly the drone and what is uh, what should be the overlaps, forward and lateral overlap. So here other two points are there. The camera view, one is nadir and the other is oblique. When the camera is at perpendicular to the ground, it is nadir view, and oblique is it is tilted. See this one. You can see this. Uh, the uh, green, green, uh, green one is your nadir. The other one is oblique. So this is important step in your drone mission planning. GSD. GSD is drone sampling distance between the two pixels. So here at what altitude? So for horizontal accuracy. Twice the GSD for vertical accuracy. Twice the GSD. So this is your mission plan, flight plan. Now you can see the green and uh, green line. This is your flight plan. Now this is in flight is in progress. The arrow. Uh, this one indicates home. Home. Uh, icon indicates. That is your place from where your uh, your drone is taking off, and that is that will be your starting point. And the arrow is your progress. Working principle of drone is to collect and create point cloud data using different payloads, sensors for georeferencing, elevation points, and colors. Payloads can be thermal, infrared. And any other one. 
Now reaches the payload, sir. Rider. When when a drone is not in auto mode, the three uh, factors play a major role. That is roll, pitch, and yaw. This is a data processing cells, which can be uh, done by Agisoft and Fixworldly software. So this is a flight plan. Now you can see that uh, red. Red circles have been turned to green when it is in a processing mode. This is a point cloud generation of OU campus. This is a mosaic of the small area. This is a JPEG image of uh, image taken by the drone. This is a DSM. Digital surface model, contour of the uh, campus building. This is DSM press contour, surface model press contour. Here you can see that uh, contour crossing on the road, and you can uh, identify its height. So now drone image, if you compare it with a Google image, so this is a Google image. Same thing you compare with the drone image. So that much variation will be there. Depths are digital elevation models. Here this is terrain model and elevation model. This is the difference between digital elevation model, terrain model, and surface model. Depth is a 3D representation. DSM is a representation with all the objects on the surface. DATM is representation with bare ground. Here, here contour are overlaid on digital uh, terrain model. Applications. You can control farm plants, construction uh, industry, archaeological sites, Photography which cannot be obtained by human health cameras and emergency services in medical field. So use of drones in agriculture, uh, spraying pesticides and now uh, in uh, next I will say uh, about the other uh, latest innovation on that. In civil engineering field, this is the application, mining, volume calculation, query, and construction site. This is application in forest department, forest management. Monitor flora and fauna conservation, vegetation like tea, sandalwood, water by means of check dams, emergency responding for forest fires, mapping hazards. Hazards like bitter medicine, snakes and animals, and surveillance. This is for uh, uh, predatory, predators and poachers. Fire lines. Fire lines are lines between uh, the forest where you can arrest the flow of fire. In the, an application in archaeological uh, services. This is in inaccessible areas like wind farms, windmills. And uh, now latest, uh, I am not promoting any uh, company or anything, but uh, Maru drones, one company, their Maru drones, they have integrated uh, satellite sensor applications into their uh, drone, uh, drone payloads. And now in a geological field they are going for mineral exploration. That is in a geological field. Whereas in agriculture field now they have got a freedom for uh, shooting this uh, paddy. Instead of transplanting directly they go on uh, building it. So that uh, that is the new application. So 
my advice to all you uh, students is the satellite application they are, uh, this company has integrated into drone application likewise you do also can think of thing like that and bring some innovation into this field or vice versa thank you very much Hello, sir. Can you ask questions? Can I ask? Yes. Make make one more. Any licensing? The you need a license to apply a drone. About those things, can you just tell? License, licensing. License. Got lots of sir. Now DGCA, DGCA is made made everything. Mandatory, it should have UAN number, unique identity number, and own ownership account number. Own. So for that, now they have arrested uh, uh, Chinese made drones. So they want to make in India, made in India. So now uh, we have so many companies, sir. Uh, in drones is there, idea of drones is there, like that. So they are bringing a lot of R&D, sir. So here. Uh, we can we go for the custom made drone to India. So we can directly apply for DGCA license. Thank you, Thank you sir. Um, Participant, do you have any questions? Yes, please. Satellite technology with this. Payloads you can vary. 
And even now, now uh, till now, no one has done with the thermal imaging, night infrared cameras. Oh, at night, we can do what are the nocturnal uh, animals or uh, birds which are flying. So that also you can make a map. Thank you, sir. Yeah, through this topic, the students have uh, you know, thrown their knowledge for about the drone, how to capture the entire thing. Thank you, thank you, sir.
what are its challenges and their applications. Yeah, can everybody tell me what, what is this building? Is known as? Air traffic controller, okay? So what does it is going to do? Air traffic controller, what is it using and where it is kept? Yes, see this, this is truly said that it is an air traffic controller. When you go to the airport, any airport across the world, you will find a very tallest building. That tallest building is known as ATC. It's an air traffic controller. It will be around a 20 to 30 story building and on the top, you will have a, a glass window there, okay? So there some people will be sitting there. So aircraft, this is the airport scenario where aircraft is, you know, landing and you have a tall building. It is known as air traffic controller. Let us see what it, it says here. And when I said on the rooftop, that is the top, you have a glass there, complete a transparent glass, where some of the people will be sitting there, so those people are known as air traffic controllers. So what they do, the air traffic controllers will communicate with the pilots. Now, we are talking about the road staffing, but very soon you have to manage the air traffic. You will very soon find an airport which has to take care of 100 aircrafts, landing and take off, having a number of runaways. So there the air traffic controller will play a major role. Because air traffic controller, unless it gives a green signal, the aircraft cannot land or it cannot even take off or it cannot even park in the airport. So that is all it is done by these guys. So these people work for 24 by 7, different people will sit their ATCs and they are going to communicate with the pilot to land and take off and park and do. So this is a daytime scenario and that is the complete scenario where the air traffic controller will be there. So this air traffic controller will have a complete area. He will be able to talk to different aircraft. Unless and until they get the permission, they will not be able to land it. So now let us define a term that is known as CLS. So when we talk about such crucial applications, very sensitive applications, where if you give a wrong signal that, you know, some aircraft you are given a green signal to land and at the same time you are given a green signal to take off. Imagine the kind of scenario, there is a lot of loss of, you know, humans with their aircraft crash can also happen. So this is all because the communication, apart from that, you also have some of the technological advances or limitations. So we will define what is C. C stands for communication, N stands for navigation and S is for surveillance. So the navigation will tell the pilot where he is there in a particular airport. And the surveillance will tell the aircraft, that is air traffic controller, where the pilot. So if for the both the people, the pilot should know where is the ATC, the air traffic controller also should know where is the pilot, where is the aircraft coming, in which way, what is the distance between it, at what height, whether it is vicinity of the airport or it has already entered into the airport. And communication is the part which will allow the two to exchange information, including where the pilot is. So therefore, there is a very perfect integration of CLS system is very, very important. Imagine a scenario where you have an aircraft coming at international aircraft, like Ithias aircraft or any other aircraft is entering there, but you have a different equipment is there. So compatibility between these systems, equipment on the aircraft and equipment on the ground should have a proper interaction should be there. But what are the issues that are there? Drawbacks. Because different equipment is there on the aircraft, which is made by different company, different model, and also we have a different equipment in the airport, you have compatibility issues with the different CN systems across the world. Apart from that, you also have the propagation limitations with the ground systems, including the instrument landing systems, etc. So, the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, their formal committee, that is known as SACLS. SACLS stands for Satellite Aided Communication navigation and surveillance. Instead of using the ground systems for communication between the air traffic controller and the pilot, let us go for satellite aided. So you do the communication with the satellite aided, then you will not have any compatibility issues whether the aircraft has got a different equipment and your airport has got a different equipment. So SACLS work is to look after satellite aided communication, navigation and surveillance. So once you have this SACLS, you will have a universal accessibility. So if you have a complete 100% implementation of this particular in the airport, then you can have thousands of aircrafts can land and take off and you will have less minimum dependency on the aircraft, that is ATC. And also it will be able to protect from any of the harmful interferences which are there on the job. So we all should, all the airports should look out for satellite aided CLS system. Okay. So now we all know this latitude and longitude, you know, which are the lines which are longitude? 
Is it horizontal or vertical lines? What the horizontal lines are longitudes or latitudes? Latitudes, okay? So horizontal lines here, you have a zero degrees equator, okay? So when we go up, it is 30 degrees towards the north, 60 degrees towards the north, and when we come back, it is 30 degrees towards the south, then 60 degrees towards the south. And similarly, vertical lines are longitudes. So if you move towards the, the other side, it will be 30 degrees east, 60 degrees east, and if you come here, it will be 60 or 80 degrees towards the west. And if you want to know your position, the location of this Dr. Elia University, you should have proper latitude and longitude. So no two points across the world will have same latitude and longitude. Okay? So that is very, very important for us. So this slide will only tell you that how do you mark a particular point in the world. Now, we all talking about since yesterday also, the first artificial satellite, we all know that it's a Sputnik. So with this complete revolution, the US has got surprised. How can the Russia become technological advanced when compared to US? And you know, there's a lot of discussion was going on. But then US has started to find this particular orbit. Immediately once this Sputnik was launched into the space, US wanted to find out what is the orbit, tracking the orbit of this particular satellite, and that has led to the concept of navigation, that is the concept of satellite navigation. So tracking the orbit of this particular one has led to the concept of satellite navigation by the United States. Now, the evaluation of GPS. What does GPS stand for? What does GPS? It is Global Positioning System, okay, which is developed by US. So there was a project in the year 1963, US Air Force, they have initiated a project 621B, which eventually evolved to NAVSTAR GPS. NAVSTAR stands for Navigation, Satellite, Timing and Rating GPS. In fact, now we are calling it as only GPS, but actually its name is NAVSTAR GPS. So by short, we are calling it as GPS. So one of the main objective of this NAVSTAR project, that is GPS project, is to guide a trident missile. There was a submarine under the water which has, which is going to launch the missile and that should be guided by this particular one missile. So this is the trident missile which need to be, you know, launched and it need to be tracked. So this is the project 621B which is a national GPS. So from here the GPS has evolved. In 1975 the design development of GPS has been started and by the end of 1990, the GPS was completely deployed, having a large number of applications across the world. Now, before we talk about GPS, we all should know about GNSS. Across the world, we only know about GPS. Which country has developed the GPS? It is the US. US is a pioneer in development of GPS, that is Global Position System, which is going to provide the position, navigation, and time information. Whenever you want to book a Ola or Uber, you should know your first of all your source, your position. From there, it will take out your destination. So this is all provided by the satellite-based positioning. So let us call. Apart from the GPS, which is developed by US, there are also other countries who have already developed their GPS. The first one is, the other one is GLONASS. Russian GPS is known as GLONASS. Russia has got its GLONASS. So in the previous talk also, we were talking about the war, the Ukraine-Russian war. There, Russia did not use the GPS, it has used its GLONASS. It is the, GLONASS is the Russian GPS system. Then we have Europe. Europe has also got its own GPS, which is known as Galileo. Then B3, why China says they are very strong military? Because it has got its own GPS system, which is known as B3 or Compass, and they do not depend upon any other country for their both civilian and military applications. Apart from that, India, we also have started this navig navigation with Indian GPS, which is known as Indian GPS Navi. Then Japan has also got its own system, that is known as QZSS, quasi satellite satellite navigation system. When compared to all this, there are only six different systems, six GPS systems across the world. When we talk about 196 countries across the world, 196 plus countries across the world, only six countries have got their own independent GPS system. Rest of the countries have to depend upon these country system for their development. And when we talk about GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, and B3, these are the only four systems which will cover the whole globe. And when we go for NAVIC, it will cover only the India and Indian subcontinent. Around Indian region, 1500 kilometers only, our Indian GPS is going to cover. 
And when we go for the Japanese CPS, it will cover only the Japanese region. It will not cover the world. So therefore, we call these four systems as the that is the global systems, and these two systems as the regional system. So combinedly, we call them as GMSs. When we want to call it all this constellation, we call it as a GMSs. Now, this GMS system, they are going to provide the positioning, navigation, and the time. All of our satellite launches are synchronized with respect to GPS time. Okay, you must have seen that 001, 002, and all that. Those are synchronized with respect to GPS time. Okay, similarly, the Russian missiles, or Russian satellites are synchronized to GLONASS, European are to Galileo, Chinese has got their own time, that is the Chinese time, Chinese video 3 time, and similarly, India has also got recently we got our dynamic time. We will discuss more about that detail. So let us see about the GPS first, how it evolved, because this was the first pioneer system in the world, and so the other systems have followed. We will see a little bit about the GPS, then we will talk more about the dynamic and its game changing technology. So GPS has got the idea in 1973. In fact, before GPS, there was another system which is known as Transit. P R A N S I T. Transit is the another satellite system, but that system was deployed in the lower orbit and it was having an error of around 100 meters and it was not able to give the perfect position. That is, precise position was not given by the transit. Therefore, it was discontinued. And then this GPS has been evolved. So design phase come, started in 1973 and by the year 1995, GPS system was declared operation across the world. Around 24 satellites are this deployed. So GPS, as I said, earlier it was known as Navstar GPS. And this system is an all-weather based satellite navigation system. Irrespective of your season, whether it is rainy season, summer season, or winter, whatever it is there, it is going to work 24 by 7. Only thing you need to have a proper compatible receiver to decode these particular signals and you can get them. The GPS satellites have got the atomic clocks. There are very high precision rubidium, cesium atomic clocks, which are going to provide precise time to the receiver. So when we talk about the GPS time, it is all because of the atomic clock times. Now when we see here, the blue ones which is there on the earth, that is the actual GPS receiver. And, and you have the other blue orbits which are there. There are some black dots are there and some red dots are there. So whenever that blue color receiver is going to receive the signals from those black dots, so you will find the visibility of the satellites that is changing. GPS satellites are placed at a height of 20,200 kilometers from the surface of the Earth. They move continuously. There, are, there should be at least 24 satellites to cover the complete globe. But at any position in India, you will be able to receive signals from 6 to 12 satellites. After 12 satellites, you are going to get, and with that, you will be able to know your position. So once you switch on the GPS receiver, you will have an access to those satellites. And the number of accessibility of satellites will vary from latitude to longitude, time of the day, position of the, uh, you know, your position, etc. Okay. Now, this is the architecture of GPS. Basically, GPS is a system which has got space segment, control segment, and user segment. Space segment consists of all the GPS satellites, and control segment has got the master station, monitor station, and ground antennas. In fact, once the GPS satellites have been launched, U.S. Department of Defense, they have completely, you know, distributed these monitor stations and master control stations across the world. Now, these monitor stations, which are kept here, those monitor stations will continuously receive the signals from the, all the satellites, and they will send the information to the master control station. Master control station is going to calculate the corrections, and it will transfer to the ground antennas. The ground antennas will transmit those corrections back to the satellites, then satellite will apply those corrections and retransmit the signal to the user segment. So whenever you use the GPS receiver in the cars or in mobile phones, in whatever application you receive, so all these applications will happen, this process will happen, and you will, in the receiver, you will receive the signal and the corrections. Both the things you are going to receive, and then you are going to get your precise position of your meters, etc. Now, when we talk about GPS, all the 24 satellites have been placed in six orbital planes. So these 24 satellites are placed in six orbital planes and they move around their Now, these satellites are not launched at once, they have been launched in different blocks. That is, 15 satellites are launched in block 2A, 12 are launched in block 2R, and 4 are launched in 
block to one. Currently, there are 32 GPS satellites are moving in this space. In that one is decommissioned, and only 31 are there. In fact, only 24 are sufficient to cover the globe. But the US has put some more satellites so that in case if there is an issue with the satellites, the other satellites can be used for GPS positioning. So that's how totally 31 satellites are moving in this space. Now this is the other part of the architecture. Uh, we have seen the space segment, we have seen the control segment, and we have seen the user segment. So user segment, that is the GPS receiver, will be able to give you the position, velocity, and the time. And here, you have the satellite space segment. In fact, when we talk about so many satellites in the space, when you have a receiver, for example, you have got a GPS receiver in the car, it should require only four satellites to know the position. You don't require from all the different satellites. Basically, GPS receiver will receive four satellite signals and its best signals done. And with that, it is going to decode and it is going to get the position. Again, here, which I said you earlier, the mark control station will collect all the signals, send to the master control station, which will calculate the corrections. What are the corrections it is going to calculate? It is going to calculate the FMRS corrections, clock corrections, and ionosphere corrections. FMRS means it will give you the position of the satellite in this space. Okay, you must have studied about the Kepler element, six Kepler elements. So any position in this space for a satellite should be described in, in terms of the, the FMRS information. So that precise FMRS information will be sent back to the satellite, that is a space segment. Space segment will apply these corrections, transmit that information to the user, and this whole process will continue. Now, this process will be saved for Russian GLONASS, Chinese video system, or Japanese system, including Indian dynamic system. So that's the reason I explain. Whatever may be any kind of GPS system, it will have a space segment, control segment, and user segment, and you will have a same order to transmit. So GPS signals are transmitted in L-band, that is 1 to 2 gigahertz. GPS signals are different kinds of signals are there. You have L1 signal, L2 signal, L3 signal, and L4 signal. And in L1 signal, there are two codes are there, C by A code and P code. C by A code stands for force recognition code, and P is for precision code. Out of these four, and L2 has got only precision code. Out of these four signals, we have access only to L1 C by A code. Whatever receivers we are talking about, all the civilian receivers, will have access only to L1 CBA code, but we will not have access to the P code. Because P code are the L1 P code and L2 P code are precision codes. They are highly encrypted and can be decrypted only by US Department of Defense. So you must have seen that how Saddam Hussein was captured in the Pakistan. At that time, there are a lot of technologies was enabled by the US. And that time, they have used the P code technology. At a millimeter level, they were able to identify and they were able to hit the Saddam Hussein. So this kind of things are hidden, okay? And uh, nobody will have access to L3 and L4 signals also. Across the world, we have access only to L1 C codes only. Now, why do you require four satellites? Why not one satellite? Why do you require four satellites to know your position? In the mobile phone or in the car, you are having a chip receiver there. If you have only one satellite signal, then you can be there in the process sphere. So, but that is not sufficient for you because you should know a pinpoint position. So therefore, when you receive signals from two different satellites, you can be anywhere in the intersection of this area. Okay, there is a brown area. So if you receive signals from two satellites, you can be there anywhere in this particular region. So that is intersection of this region. So that is not sufficient. Last two minutes. But this is 40 minutes, that's why I'm Okay, so if you get the if you get the three satellites, you can be there anywhere here. So therefore, you should have four satellites, which will remove the ambiguity and you get a big point position. So that's the reason you should require minimum four satellites, and four satellites will not you know intercept with the that is the GPS position. Now GPS will offer two services. One is SPS, other one is PPS. SPS is for civilian applications, and PPS is for that is for military applications. Then we will see the errors. You know, when you switch on the receiver, you are getting, you are not getting a pinpoint position because GPS signal should be transmitted from a 20 to 20 kilometers. It has to go through ionosphere, it has to go to troposphere. The signal in the ionosphere, there are a lot of electrons and ions are there. It will get, you know, it will get uh, interacted and therefore there will be delay in the loss space, etc. And finally, by the time it is received, there is a lot of signal loss is there. And so there is a lot of Yeah, yes sir. So, this is all the error you are going to get. 
okay you will not get a pinpoint position but you have, if you add up all these things the you are going to get a 15 meters error with respect to dps okay so it is these are the reasons why we talk about this now apart from the four satellites how do you view the satellite okay you are you are sitting on the receiver here you can receive signals from this direction this these are any of the directions okay but you should not receive all the signals in one particular direction then you will not get a precise position so that geometry is explained by the dog that is known as dilution of precision so that's why here we call it the poor dog that is a good dog there should be a proper distribution of the dog so that you get a precise position the ideal value of the dog should be equal to 1 once you have the ideal value of the dog is equal to 1 you should have this kind of scenario if you don't have this kind of scenario then you are not going to get the position here okay so this is an ideal satellite geometry and here you can see all are concentrated from only one direction so you will not get an accurate position here it is too wide distributed then also you should not like it it is only on one side okay you are getting only this side but you are not getting signal from area of the satellite then you will not get a proper position okay so like this okay so this is not a precise position your receiver will not give you accurate precise position now let us forget about gps gps is gone much before much beyond us want to modernize the gps they already launched five modernization satellites they are having much more advanced features with lot of cyber security etc so by the year 2030 gps will no more will be there you will have a gps modernized satellite with more signals etc okay so these are, it will also have many signals also gps modernization receivers current gps issues will not be used you have to go for the modernization now when we talk about ir analysis which is known as the initially when the project started is known as indian digital navigation satellite later the our honorable prime minister has renamed it as indian that is navigation with indian constellation in fact it is known as indian gps it is very well known as indian gps which is known as ir analysis but since the government has renamed it it will be known as navig now why we want to go for navig when gps signals are freely available why we should go for huge investment in this particular one during the kargil war the gps signals were not available for indian region but they were available for the pakistan and rest of the world so many of our soldiers have died during this particular region we were not able to get the data so that's the reason in that particular war the indians have realized to go for design and development of our own indian gps system so that we did not rely on any other countries so so now currently we are very self reliant because we have our own system it is completely developed and implemented by isro and we are going to put the satellites already satellites have been placed in geo synchronous and geo stationary satellites now this navig will cover 10 meters over indian landmass and 20 meter position accuracy over the indian ocean we are going to cover indian ocean also like other constellation is available for 24 by 7 and architecture as i said it will also have this space segment control segment ground segment but unlike in the gps where we put in the medium or orbit our satellites are placed in geo synchronous and geo stationary orbits okay. so like this you place some satellites in the geo stationary some in place in the geo synchronous now all these satellites are been on recently nbs01 which was launched on 26th may 2013 so currently eight gps uh, indian navig satellites are in operation and we can them provided we have our own navig receivers like other gps systems we have also have control segment many other segments across the indian region now unlike gps which will transmit signals in l band we have transmission of l and s band that is 1 to 2 gigahertz and 2 to 4 giga that is a uniqueness of our indian navig system and we can use it for both civilian applications as well as for the military application so why we are also very self reliant because we need not depend upon any other country's gps signals all our equipment related to the military applications can directly use the indian navig system and they can this is the first space aircraft there are many applications are there which will cater to civil aviation and the fleet management forest department disaster management naval fleet management etc so we need not depend upon any of these considerations we can directly go for a indian navigation center and apart from that what we have done we have also run this particular in 2016 we had an moe with the space application center isro and we have established this advanced research laboratory and the very fortunate that kiran kumar sir was the chairman at the time he has provided us the receivers and we connected it this is the actual ips receiver in a bigger size we are going to get the data 24 by 7 
and we are going to do a lot of atmospheric studies, we are going to do a lot of experiments on that, and we provided the receivers. So this is a graphical user interface where we can show you total number of satellites visible at our Osmaria University, and this is another DNSS receiver. Apart from that, what we did is my company the GPS, so we have kept our navic antenna on a vehicle driving and we tested it. We are traveling throughout the campus and we have proved that in the GPS system is far going to provide a better position accuracy when compared to the GPS. And the results were shared with the Space Application Center where Venus, SSI and Asum Sukhasan were also there for it. Now GPS is very prone to jamming. One more jammer can easily jam the GPS signals. So this is the current challenge that the jamming technology should be improved and we should have a better technology for these kind of things. Apart from navic, we can also go for different kinds of multi receivers to get the position. Not only depend upon GPS, let us go for Jonas, Galileo, navic and other things and go for the positioning. That's the other one. Now currently the navic products are already available. There are some of the companies started who already started with this millimeter level, centimeter level products which can be used in the automobiles or which can be used in any of the applications, fleet management or even the tractors or even the sports, biomedical applications, everywhere. Wherever GPS is there, you place with the Navic system and you can use it. So they are looking like a gold chips, but they are real Navic receivers which can be put and which can be completely relied upon it and we can use it. So many other companies, including the ESO, they have produced the receivers like L1 receiver, S3 receivers and a lot of changes will be there. And we will also have a new application developed in the mobile app which can have the mapping and GS software, automatic logistics in factories, vehicle tracking, fleet management, terrestrial navigation, vision and voice navigation, integration with mobile phones, we can have a lot of things. Now can we use this static data for finding out the, that is the soil master, potential reference source, accuracy, quality, precision navigation. We did not We should not because it is, we have already seen its, its real colors during the carrier bar, so no we will not depend upon this particular system. So there are many other autonomous vehicles which are which slowly started. They are testing the comparators of GPS and Navic and definitely Navic was doing very much better. So we need to have a complete ecosystem, commercial application and it will have a lot of social impact, including our Aadhaar card also will be linked to the Navic chip because the government of India also will know where a person, particular person is using this navic, that is the other car, and its movement will be tracked. And apart from that, there are a lot of benefits are there with the navic and the GPS system. Because it's having a greater control over its navigation and so is it redundant in case of system interruptions. If you have an, if you have an issue with the Jonas or other countries, we need not have any problem with that. Directly all of the satellite launches are with respect to the navic time because the Indian GPS time is going to provide a precise time, it is going to have that problem. And other benefits which are there, applications in geospatial technologies, so many are there in agriculture, disaster management, soil master, crop management, and many other you know customized operations are also there, and there is a need for this. Indian government has given instruction that by the year 2025, all the mobile phones should have this static chip. It is mandatory, otherwise they cannot sell the phones in India. So already the government has made it mandatory for all the smartphones to use this particular Navic system and it is the cutting edge technology to have Now it is the early union mission of state for electronics. They have already launched the Apple iPhone that is 15 series which have this Indian Navic system. There is an Indian Navic system which can provide you a lot of applications and mobile applications will be there. And a lot of the articles have been published that is from war to the business to economy. This is what the trading chain is there. That magic is the technology which is arising in India in number of areas. Other challenges, like Sir was talking about the drones. In drones also we are using GPS. You cannot completely learn the GPS because GPS are with the GPS satellites which are under the US. At crucial application, you would have good have a different issues will be there. So let us replace the which has got a GPS chip with a Navic chip which I have shown earlier. So that will be helping to solve our problems with the agriculture insulation, yeah, that is insurance, integration of products to be solved cases under no. the Passive Bima Yojana and the built -in database of the complete agriculture data which will supplement the distribution of land records and the use of ISRO's homegrown Navic technology in developing drones especially for the remote sensing imagery mapping application. All application, whatever has been done, everything should be again going for this. 
and domestic mapping solution should be done with the Navi. Again, even if you're done with GPS, again, you have to go and do it with the Navi applications. It is very much important. And we will have a lot of applications, development of the terrestrial, aerial, marine navigation. Again, Navi kit should be used everywhere on the ship, boat, etc. The government of India is going to distribute millions of receivers to the fishermen across the Indian coastal region where we have seen the Bombay attacks. Okay, In the Bombay attacks, the boat was not traced because on the boat, boat the terrorists were using the GPS system, GPS receiver. Now, every boat should get registered with the government of India and they should have a navic chip in them. If it is not registered, if it is not going to have a navic chip, then it means it is a, not an authorized boat. So that kind of thing is going to come in the marine navigation, disaster management, IRNS is one year satellite will provide information to all the fishermen providing a set of display phones which will provide them about the potential fishing zones, about the international borders. Many of our soldiers were also being shot when they were going to the other boundaries. Now they will alert them, navic receiver will alert them that they should not cross the international borders. So that is going to save a lot of people. Vehicle tracking, fleet management, integration with the mobile phones, precise diving. All of our cellular mobile communication, electrical power grids. You have not imagined all the electrical power grids across India, they are all synchronized with two GPS time. So at one click, that is you introduce a falsification of the time, all our electrical power grids will be off at one time. That's a very safe way of attacking a particular country. So therefore there is a need, already the ISRO and other people are working to replace the GPS time synchronized with the precise timing of navig so that you will not have an issue with the cellular mobile communication applications or the electrical power grids. Map including solution, terrestrial navigation, hikers, vision and voice navigation is very, very important for this application. So, whatever may be the applications, this is an ARIC is going to change the game and just in one or two years you will find a lot of evaluation. So, there is a need of a lot of startups being encouraged, a lot of government schemes are there where you have to go for design, development of these navic chips and giving the ideas, replacement of GPS yeah. systems or you can go a multi constellation system which can receive the navic signal, GPS, GONAS and other country signals so that you yeah. don't have any issues. So wherever you go, even when you are doing the navigation from point to point, this is what it, it is there. Uh, we are talking about the space debris also earlier. So I got an idea, let us replace all the satellites with a small chip which will eliminate the problem of the space debris, which will eliminate the problem of the parking also, and that is what my name is. So thank you very much. So, and uh, just I want to share one small thing, because we were very afraid of the AI. Okay, so I was talking about AI in different locations also. What I will say, what AI cannot do, because everyone is talking about AI. So AI cannot do innovation, AI cannot read a human mind. AI cannot completely behave like a human. AI cannot explore. AI cannot feel emotions like love, anger, or depression. AI cannot make ethical decisions autonomously. AI cannot replace education, marketing, and designing. And last but not the least, AI cannot conduct this wonderful seminar, what India University has done. Participant, do you have any queries? If you ask any queries, you can have a session. Uh, Sir, uh, you said about uh, the NAVIC is applicable right now only for Indian terrain. Yes. But suppose a warship, they have to travel across the globe. They want to do, there are a threat across the globe. So they, they wanted to find out where exactly through NAVIC in that case, uh, you don't need to go yes, for sir. Yes, sir. So actually, NAVIC will cover up to 1500 kilometers. <coughs> As per ISRO ICD document, up to 1500 kilometers we are going to cover. But it is also extended to the other regions. But beyond that region, we cannot track. We have to go depending on no. Russian donors, our Chinese system, our Galileo system. But now, the ISRO wants to launch uh, the satellites up to 11 or 12, up to regional constellation. Then later, like GPS, we are also going to the medium earth orbit and we will also have very soon the global dynamic also will be there. So currently we have launched the satellites, now we will go for the global system also. So when uh, government has it mandated uh, all uh, the mobile uh, telephones, uh, yes. you have uh, the dynamic? Uh, yes, yes, yes. 
Labbing is must in all the mobile phones. So that's what they kept a target to have this one. Including the RTA, when you go for registration of vehicles also, in all the public vehicles, they made it mandatory. And in the railways also, around 65 to 75 percent of the work related to Labbing is being done. Every train will have a Labbing and doesn't register also will be there on that, apart from the GPS. That, that is there. So every sector will have this particular system. So idea is to completely develop a indigenous system, depend on our own system, and also check the boundaries. Let us go for the global system. After looking at the target of our experience, let's go for our own reliable system. Okay. Uh, since uh, we have a uh, strong electronic system, So what is your uh, suggestion for uh, making the students who really get into uh, this name itself? Yes. In, in our laboratory, we, have to, we want to make our students who realize, understand, then uh, work with that uh, applications of uh, I mean, uh, Navic. So can you just give some suggestions? What is possible, we can go for starting of a center of Navic Institute in Bangalore. Yes. Yeah. We can go for starting of center of excellence in GLSS, where you can have a single frequency, dual frequency, multi frequency receivers, including the handle set of receivers. Now, what you can do is you can connect these receivers antenna on the rooftop of the building, where you can receive all constellations. So, you can have a global constellation, whatever satellite signals which I was talking about here. You can have all these constellations here. You can receive the data and you can do develop a lot of algorithms related to the ionosphere, troposphere, etc. Apart from that, you can do the vehicle tracking experiments. Then, apart from that, you should also go for development of a small chipset in the diopic area of the startups. So, if you develop a small chip, that any, and you can rename that your own chip, MGR, Malik chip, and if that should be again certified with the ISRO, then you can replace all your vehicles with this Malik and you can use them. But first of all, the BTEC students and MTEC students should be able to know how does the data looks like. You know, the raw data should be converted to the lab, that is the dot CSG files, or Linux data, they have to extract all the parameters. A lot of PSD works should also be done on this particular work. So really, the students will get a lot of exposure about the technological development and also development of these receivers. So research challenges, analyzing data is one part, acquiring data. Now, let me tell you, sir, if you, you have to receive this data 24 by 7, any special event, solar eclipse event, etc. So your data is very valuable. Only you will get that. Even ISO will not get because you are having your own receiver. So when we want that, we will share that. Similarly, we are also sharing data to the side to our equity link. So really the idea the students should get encouraged into this and they understand the concept and you know the if their ideas innovation is never ending. Because we are also doing experiments on development of the how does this uh, rabbit behavior in the mobile phones and compare it to the GPS. So we have done a lot of papers and published and we are doing them there. So definitely I feel if we can start up a center of you know excellence in GNSS studies, so with a lot of receivers, then I think the students can do a lot of wonders in this particular area. Yes, sir. Yeah, yes, yes, sir. Potential for the students. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Potential for the students to do the R&D using the GPS data. Correct. Yes, sir. Uh, thing is, they can make their own chip. Like, I do not chip, they can make. Yes, yes. And uh, they can sell it as, as you said, uh, we are uh, having chips. Yes, yes. The main question comes from the accuracy point. Yes. The CEP. Yes, correct. Circular of error. Error property, yes. CEP, SCP. CEP of... Uh, GPS of American. Correct, yes. There is a military base. Correct. Yes. Their codes are not available to us. Correct, yes. Only civilian codes are available to us. Correct, yes. So with the civilian codes, yes. we were not able to go beyond 5 meters. Correct, yes. Whereas in the Gulf War, they can identify the enemy's soldier number. Correct. So the enemy uh, uh, army soldier number they were able to identify. Yes. So, the our point in R&D on GPS is how to improve the CEP value, Correct. Yes, sir. either by computation method or putting number of constellation. You more put more constellation. More constellation, that's true. More constellation you, you put. You can have a constellation of 40 satellites. Yeah, that, 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 that is one way. That's how Galileo and GLONASS they use 27 satellites. Correct. 27 satellites in the remote, uh, the uh, low Earth orbit. Yes. Sir. Whereas we did it with the seven satellites. 
seven circuit out of seven three are in the geosynchronous orbit. Yes. Whether we can increase that uh, number? Yes, yes. We we are going up to eleven, up to eleven. So for the uh, the my question is whether that increasing the number with uh, cube shot like things. No, no, no. Cube satellites will be only one eight, eight, eight U. Ah, uh, these cube satellites are only in lower orbit, whereas our satellites in the geostationary, geosynchronous. Okay. Our satellites. No, this GPS now you you also know, put to the constellation. Ah, okay. with the with the constellation. Uh, you put number of the things like our uh, even uh, SpaceX or something like Correct. that. Yeah. They are going for the commercial satellites at low Earth. Correct. Those things using a CubeSat technology that can be done. and uh, putting the same receiver, GPS uh, transmitter Correct. Yes. in the CubeSat, that means uh, still it will be economically viable and it will be commercially, okay, you can get more data yes. to the public. Yes. That's Starling, what SpaceX is doing, and that all can be done. So, as far as the positioning, sir, if you are able to develop the navic chip and show precise applications for S5 and uh, s -band. And if you do the concept, then ISRO may also give us for restricted signal access. That is also possible to us. So, that we can do it. Sir. So, advancement of uh, astronomy studies is a uh, GNSS or any relationship with uh, astronomy studies in uh, GNSS. You are talking about GNSS. Most of the things related to the astronomy studies. Astronomy is there any relationship between astronomy studies and the GNSS? Sir, GNSS uh, actually it's a satellite constellation which will give position, navigation, and time. So I, I will give one innovative application about this. No, no, that is in astronomy also we can find any kind of uh, satellite or any position. Uh, Mathematical calculations we can able to find out where it is like that. Correct, correct. So the GNSS system also, so we can find the where it is like that. Yes. So can, can we say uh, the GNSS is the advancement of uh, uh, astronomy studies or any relationship with that? Sir, GNSS can be you see now uh, after Chandrayaan I, I, I can remember like uh, the years, uh, 25 years back uh, studied astronomy in my during my college studies. Most of the things you are talking about. Uh, only. Yes. That's why I'm asking, this GMS is an advancement of astronomy studies? I'm asking. No, no, advancement of astronomy studies, sir, it is advancement of many technologies. GMS itself did not grow. The mathematical models are developed. Mm. The receiver technology is developed. Atmospheric models are developed. Coordinating systems are developed. And these studies are also used for space studies, astronomy also. Suppose now people are talking about the lunar navigation. Okay, you want a position on the Luna, you know, we have put our lander over there. So you want to know its position. So we, we cannot use the GNS technology. So we have to go for the next generation technology. Luna navigation, how we have to get the particular point there. So that is what we were talking about then. Luna navigation, celestial body navigation, space navigation. The same like, thing I asked. Uh, yeah, stellar navigation, it's, it's, it's much more than that. Whereas all of our satellites are focusing towards the Earth. Our GNS constellation is focusing to the earth, to the marine and to the air. That too up to that region only. But we are not going to the deep space missions. Now, deep space mission is a challenging task. How do you find a solution of a any asteroid in a deep space mission? What technologies could be there? What are its challenges could be there? So that is the new technology which we have this seen about that. Thank you, thank you, Professor. It's a yeah. Professor of uh, the Next we can give the chance to our participant. Participant, would you like to have any interaction? Participant? Uh, we all know to go about the GPS to track the uh, Uber and other things and find the coffee shop. Now, uh, with the GPS, we can uh, get down to know that our uh, country security process and the other healthcare process and other very important parts also through NAVIC chip we can develop it. Uh, sir, and also our uh, ECH code and the computer science is also available. Yes, they have what are your uh, suggestions? Yes, yes. Over the uh, center of part uh, navic chip, Yamcha navic chip also it will be with the that support of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Sir, you, you can have the Yamcha uh, Ionosphere model also. Sure. Let me tell you, sir, till today, we were not able to predict the Ionosphere variations. 
we are not able to predict because it changes for different geomatic storms, geomatic indices, lot of models should be developed. Even our university or a Chennai can have a separate model for this particular one. So that can be possible only with your data. Nobody will get your data. It's a very unique your own source because it will travel through the atmosphere your own region. So that's the kind of thing you can have that particular one. Yes. Sir, yes. Sir, yes. No. Sir, uh, yes, sir, was developed, uh, sir. Uh, uh, like when we went to SAC, they had uh, some companies. Either they have to develop an L band receiver or S band receiver or combined L and S band receivers. So they have given the task because ICD document they have given it. Now they have got a models are there with them. But they want the vendors to develop millions of receivers. That should be approved by the SAC so then it can go to all the applications. So that project is left over now. I also want these products tips to be developed. Now many other some of the companies have developed it, but their testing is not going through as per the ICT documentation. So that is required. Uh, now the end of the day, this navigation issue should be either in the mobile. Yes. So the mobile are manufactured by different companies. It should be a, the, the, the chip should be manufactured by a single person. Then only that the application will be properly. Yes, yes. Uh, yeah, if your application is compared with Apple, then they will come to you and they have to Apple 15th was going to have it. So they are using it already. So that's, that mobile phone is already released there in, the, in India. Thank you, thank you, sir. Hello sir, I am Aarti from CFIS department sir. As you were talking about uh, spoofing and jamming sir, yes, yes. you said that that was the current uh, issue we are facing sir. Correct, yes. So can you please let us know the challenges we are having? Yes. See sir, the jamming, like uh, let me tell you a very big VIP. He is using our Mavic uh, receiver and is moving from source to their station. Or you take any other example, you have a lot of money to be, you know, put in some ATM bank and you are blindly following the vehicle. Okay, there are two things what you can do. You put a jam light and you jam the signals, it won't work in the usability applications. Whereas super will receive the position. Okay, especially if there is a lot of security issues are there. Like if you take the deserted areas and in marine navigation, even marine navigation, when a person wants to go, you stand up the boat from source to destination. Without knowing that, you know, the Navy people, you put a swooper, instead of going to a particular destination, they will automatically go to the rest of the destination. Because swooper is going to transmit the GPS signal kind of signals, which will lock on to the, this particular ship receiver. So instead of four satellites, in that two satellites will lock on to the swooping satellites, swooping in swooper, next to will be the two satellites. So if you are going to NTR University, you will go to some other university and it will land there. So swooping technology, you should have a the best super and you should have a best anti super, best jammer and best anti jamming technique, which will be useful for both civilian as well as for military applications. So both including the drone. Like people, you know, the drone technology, there should be a very drone precisely, millimeter level, which should hit only one person. I don't want to hit the group of people, I want to hit only one person. So imagine a millimeter level precision should be there. So if, that is the point from other side, but if you want to protect, you develop best anti-jammer, or best jammer, you block that drone. You develop a best super, you mislead that super to other location. That way you can protect your own people. So there is a technological war between the swooping, anti-swooping development and jamming and anti-jamming development. That, that will go on. And there is a manga in the yes. the swooping, okay. multiple data. How to select, how yes. to eliminate the error. Correct. The best thing you can select. There are some algorithms which are available in some literature. Yeah, literature it is available, yes. Thank you, sir. I don't understand. That's a good question, actually. Yes, sir. We can understand a lot of both of these. Thank you, thank you, uh, Dr. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. We are appreciating and thanksgiving our speaker.
And also, I would like to especially thank our uh, uh, Saranya ma'am because she also provided that wonderful opportunity. And before that, uh, providing this feedback is not only a special opportunity, but it is also an uh, opportunity to mention each of the scientists because they provided the seminar and wonderful, informative and engaging seminar. So I would like to thank each and every scientist who provided provided their valuable information. And we would like to we, we can know A to Z about uh, space technology. So I would like to specially thank Sri Neelesh Desai sir, Director of Space Application Center, because he provided wonderful information about space technology. Uh, yesterday day session one and also opportunities for startups and entrepreneurship by uh, our scientist Dr. A. Sivadana Pitae sir, uh, Brahmos and also Dr. B. Narayan sir, he was the first person who was providing us the valuable session on introduction to space technology so that we could know more about uh, space technology. Also, uh, Manika Vasakam sir, he was providing about the uh, opportunities for empowering satellite uh, technology and also Empowering innovatives and uh, startups through student satellite program, which was provided by uh, GN Prasad sir yesterday uh, session one, and also empowering with nano satellites uh, by Loganathan uh, sir. So uh, these are all the valuable sessions which we attended yesterday. Uh, also, also I would like to thank Dr. K Vasan sir because it was a very very wonderful session. Through that, we could know more about uh, doing satellites. You can, we can do a DIY satellites, so it was a wonderful session. And also space activities, legal issues, legal issues and aspects uh, by V. Uh, Gopalakrishnan sir. And also the mechanic, mechanism for spacecrafts by Sri N. Prasad sir. And also Jawahar uh, Raja sir, he was explaining about uh, sun, exploring sun. And also I would like to thank again Dr. K. Vasan sir, he was uh, explaining about the satellites. And also Giridharan Tirupati Rajan sir, he was explaining about Agnikul, uh, about the additive manufacturing. And also sir was mentioning about uh, visiting Agnikul sir. So if you provide uh, details in the group, it would be very, very valuable sir. And also I would like to thank B.A. Subramani sir from Yesipal. He was explaining about space combinations so that we could uh, we can we can know about uh, space applications and also tracking satellites through uh, transmitter radio module and also especially I would like to thank uh, uh, Sri M S Rahul sir from Aero Space Tech. He was explaining about how aerospace could provide a new course through Indian development and also I would like to thank uh, Shiva Subramanian sir who was explaining about advanced manufacturing and uh, precision manufacturing, thank you so much. And also I'd like to thank uh, R.P. Narasimha Rao sir, who was explaining about uh, drone technology, thank you so much sir. And also I would like to thank Dr. Bermona Navin sir, he was explaining about uh, uh, navig navigation from navigation to space, Indian constellation, so thank you so much sir. He was from Professor from Osman University. So, and also, last but not the least, I would like to thank all the students. I would like to thank uh, Sir ECHOD and everyone. All of you, thank you so much for providing this wonderful opportunity. Thank you so much. <laughs> 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 So how keen you observe and how you are interested. Uh, it's a very uh, good session 
I gained a lot of knowledge about the satellites and the aerospace and the things and the things uh, by the scientists and the experts and the uh, and the startups and the, everything. They sold a lot of knowledge and uh, and gained in a Google. Uh, these knowledge is are so helpful to us. Uh, well, thank you to give, giving this uh, wonderful knowledge. Thank you. Sir. Good evening, everyone. One and present here. Uh, myself, Yogi Bajaj, BTEC CSC third year. I feel so glad to be a part of such an extensive national seminar 3.0. Uh, it provides me a vibe. It provides me a very clear understanding of complex concepts related to aeroscope and space technology. Being a part of this two-day program has been given opportunity to expand my knowledge about Indian space. A space drone and landing program and the entire journey of its road to achievement. Thank you all. Thank you. Uh, first of all, would like to thank our HOD, CSA HOD, Dr. S. Gita Ma'am, to give me a chance to attend this seminar 3.0. And thanks of all our initiative and our experts and our, uh, our department head, CSA department, Dr. V. Sizer, he given me a uh, Full support to join this seminar. Thanks to all our students and my dear friends. Good evening to everyone here. Uh, this was a beautiful session. Uh, the two days I have learned many things. Uh, the, my perspective was that uh, only aeronautical engineer, when we learn that only we can enter the space technology. Still, my perspective that was. But within two days, I come to know that every domain is important to enter the space technology. And I come to know that uh, even the little things, the GPS tracking and about the drone technology. So thanks to our university to engage this session. And I want more applied, uh, coming like this. Thanks to our university. Thank you. from BTEC CFI's department and I am very happy to attend this meeting due, because of my uh, CS department HOD ma'am as well as space club they have invited me and me to lucky to be here as I am as I'm here I just learned a lot of things especially I just uh, got uh, information about drones that is here also my friend who is in the school but he is not that is I guess he is Mr. Yomi and I like everyone's lecture too and uh, Dr. Basan sir, I guess, yes, I want to thank him personally because he just gave me a motivation to develop a one new satellite with the available resources. As well as, I like to thank Sivadana and everyone here. Thank you so much. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, And then, first of all, I give thanks to my mom, Ratna mom. She insists me to join her face. So, I have to her. I also always a fanatic about her uh, speech. Uh, she will be uh, starting with the Turit Pranavadra, Yavad Mure, like that. So, because of her, I joined this seminar. And I uh, too got more knowledge about this. And I need to thank, of, thank Professor Dr. D. Vishwanathan, sir. Because I'm literally getting a goosebumps by right? your saying that uh, within a 24 months or uh, 6 months we have finished this project, that project. So I was getting so goosebumps. So uh, thanks for the management and Rekha sir and Sivirika sir for giving us this more uh, opportunity and uh, this for this also. Thank you.
Good evening, everyone. My name is S.V. Sisitra Devi. I am from B.T. 22nd year. Uh, first of all, I am very, I am very fond of uh, space. Uh, when I came to know that uh, the university is pro providing a seminar on space, I am very uh, excited because uh, no other, uh, I think no other university is providing like this. Uh, thank you, our President, for conducting this seminar. And thank you all the scientists and speakers who got to lectures on the space. Thank you. Thank you. So, one thing is confirmed here. Namo students support that way. Start pandra mantra na kasto. Start pandi tanga na mata ita kanta pandi tanga. Thank you so much.
doesn't belong to our university. He is from other college. Really, I was happy uh, listening to his feedback because that is the success of this event. I just directed him to rector sir and made him to register for this event. But when I am able to hear from him about, uh, I mean, the entire vote of thanks that he was he gave, really, that is what I consider as a success of this event. Thanks for the opportunity to rector sir and our registered sir. Thank you. We invite the Jodi IT Department, Dr. Kanyama. Sundar, 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 Sundar. Wait, let it walk, let it walk. Sarana, sir. Live, live, but. Thank you, Dr. Vishwath and Sir and the team. Really, they have worked hard for the past two or three months to make the event a grand success. Actually, this nurtured the interest on space science among the students. Uh, I'm sure that space 4.0 will be getting more and more registration uh, because of this two days session. Congratulations. I request the students to stay back for a group photo. Sundar, what are you doing? Back, Lord.
He is a guide, philosopher, each and every aspect of the earth. He goes deep into, and then he sees to that everything is done I systematically, and then to the maximum precision also. So that is what actually his uh, greatness is. So all of us, I mean, for all of us, he is a role model. If you go what he has demonstrated to us, so definitely, every, wherever we go, there will be an opportunity. Awaiting for us. So this is what actually the very uh, best character of uh, our uh, rector. So uh, let us give a standing ovation uh, to a uh, great personality.
students. Uh, two of our students, based on the same students, one uh, Benpriyan and then Pranav. So they have taken up uh, much pain in bringing out uh, this <laughs> seminar booklet. So really, uh, within two days, uh, they have completed their task. So beautifully it has come. So let us uh, give uh, uh, applause for them. Dear faculties and students, I'm really so happy to end this evening that our program was a great success. Also, and then, if possible, 
we try to have some more participants from uh, uh, Japanese as well as uh, uh, from other leading countries also. Uh, even Israel is also doing a lot of uh, activity around these space applications. So uh, this year, the coming year, uh, I mean it is a real uh, one year plan for all of us. Uh, we have to post an, uh, I mean a program of such an international uh, standard. I hope uh, with the, all the uh, cooperation from our uh, of the department as well as uh, from the students and the faculty members of Satellite and Space Application Center. I think I hope uh, it will also be successfully planned and then executed uh, to the international standards. Uh, now I have come to the stage of thanking all uh, the people who all involved in this uh, for the successful completion of this uh, space 3.0. First of all, I have to thank from uh, uh, our uh, management onwards. Uh, Ten years before itself, our founder chancellor he said. We have to have our own satellites in the space, but none of us could able to take up the challenge at the time. So, fortunately, two years before when the rector uh, sir has joined with us, then immediately our management has put a request, sir, can you just take the lead on this particular domain? Sir has readily accepted, and then we formed a beautiful team comprising of all the faculty members from various departments and then selected students also really yeah. has taken off very well. Now it is a I mean we are seeing the witness also. And then the next person to be thanked is our president sir. So whenever we go with any requirement as far as this space application center is concerned, without any hesitation, he says when we go with a particular plan, he will say that he will augment with some more uh, developments also. He says, do like this. So this is what actually he did the view of the management yeah. as far as establishing this particular satellite and space application center. We are really fortunate to have a president like that. And then obviously our top management like from our vice chancellor onwards, the vice registrar, and then other additional registrars, everybody. And then especially the heads of the department, they have deputed some of the best faculty members to this department for enabling better functionalities also. For this particular space 3.0, in fact, the organizing committee, we have uh, done a lot of uh, uh, reversal, a lot of planning also. So many committees were formed. So I thank all the committee members for meticulously planning the, and the execution of this particular program. Uh, I have to thank uh, especially uh, Dr. Sandeel Kumar, uh, our uh, joint register, for all the logics, logistic support that actually he had and I mean, uh, executed also. And then I have to thank uh, our uh, Dr. Ganeshan, uh, who is a joint uh, register of uh, the CDC, the Ganeshan Development Cell, who has, I mean, uh, no role uh, I mean, for this, but always he used to. See that uh, this center is thriving uh, with all individual efforts. So, he has when uh, uh, the finance matter uh, was a problem, he volunteered, Dr. Ganeshan volunteered, and then took that. Uh, let me uh, take uh, that particular challenge. He, as a single man with uh, Dr. Anthony, they brought around uh, 60,000 rupees uh, for uh, the management of this particular 3.0. It is a really challenging task. So, our uh, special thanks to Dr. Dr. Ganeshan for uh, uh, this special guest sir. As well as when we left out with faculty members to organize this particular program, we, I mean, accepted, uh, we uh, requested uh, other faculty members from the various departments. So, uh, we, uh, fortunately, we got uh, uh, Dr. Sandil Gailan and then uh, um, uh, Dr. Mohan Das and then uh, Mrs. Saravanan uh, and then um, uh, Tom Hayes. Uh, Dr. Kaliga, so these are the people who readily volunteered and then uh, uh, say, they said, uh, yes, we are ready to take uh, challenges also. They have fi fi finally executed their responsibilities. Now my special thanks to uh, Siva uh, and then uh, his team members and then Mr. Christopher, so who was always there uh, with us in uh, taking up the audio and then the digital control uh, systems. So really, a tremendous job uh, done by all uh, people. So if I had left, uh, then...
Uh, my special thanks to uh, the sponsors, uh, the Red Deep sponsor, Lance and Toyota, and then uh, thanks to the co-sponsor, City Bank, and then uh, uh, Ascent, Overseas, uh, and then the Global Reach Education uh, System for their uh, uh, sponsorship also. So, if I have left over any of uh, uh, the people, it is out of my ignorance, not by the purpose. So please, uh, so let us all join together for uh, making this uh, a grand success.
Okay, ready? Thank you. Satir Kailas, you will not matter about Matter. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Sir, one second, sir. Ready, ready, ma, ready, ready. One more, one more. Come on, come ready, sir, ready. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank 
தம்பி
ओके रेडे तमी नडुले कैप लवा कुंज कैप लवा और सार तेरी ले सार ना क्या प्रॉस में सर इंदर पकाओ सर सर कौन सर सर सिल जो सर कौन सा लिया सर कौन सा लिया सर क्या पा आ वो क्या वो क्या सर सर तो कौन सी डाल मार इंदर कौन सा कौन सा डाल मार वो क्या रेडी सर रेडी रेडी सर के पास सर इंदर कौन सा कौन सा मार रेडी पड़े सर वो रेडी सर सर कौन सा कौन सा रेडी पड़े सर तभी मोबाइल लड़के रहो सुन पिने डा माँ। ओके रेडे सर रेडे तभी इस बार मार रेडे। नहीं इस बार मार रेडे रेडे रेडे। ओके थैंक यू सर थैंक यू।
ಮೆಂಬರ್ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ರೆಡಿ ಮ್ಯಾಮ್ ರೆಡಿ 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 ಸರ್ ರೆಡಿ ಸರ್ ರೆಡಿ 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 ವೆಯ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಸರ್ ವೆಯ್ಟ್ ಮಾಡಿ ಓಕೆ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸರ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಮುಡಿಸಲ್ಲ ಫೋನ್ ಮಾಡಲ್ಲ 